Hello, everyone. Uh, this particular uh, commentary is, well, it's, it's fairly serious. Not like a heart attack, but it's about financial fraud, in particular related to credit cards, and a particular thing that MasterCard allows, and maybe others do, that is absolutely ridiculous especially since it seems to have no controls on it. Hence, the clickbaity headline, but it's actually relevant. So, here we go. It's, it's probably best illustrated with the story of what actually happened. So, without further ado, here's the story. Back in early June, I noticed uh, a charge on my... MasterCard, which was clearly not one that I did. It was for some uh, contractor in Ontario, and I haven't been in Ontario in a long time. I certainly wasn't in Ontario at the beginning of June, and I certainly wasn't getting any work done that would involve contractors in Ontario. So it was obviously not valid. So I called up my card issuer, had a chat with them and they noticed another charge um, from a uh, uh, from uh, let's uh, you know I'm just gonna name them from consumer reports uh, which I also did not authorize I have had no dealings with consumer reports uh, up until this fraudulent charge so uh, they reversed both charges, cancelled the card, and issued a new one. That should have been the end of it, because, uh, quite frankly, you know that's about the best thing they can do. And with the card number cancelled, new charges can't be applied to it, right? So, anybody that has the old card number, they're stopped dead in the water. They can't put through new charges, right? And that's perfectly fine. And if if it had stopped there, I would have been perfectly happy. Now, I'm not naming the card issuer, but uh, I can say that they have done reasonably well in this situation. Certainly, the initial contact was reasonably good. Now, I figured, okay, problem solved. New card, they can't, nobody, else, nobody has the, that has the old number can make new charges. Well, Fast forward exactly 30 days from the Consumer Reports charge. Boy, was I proven wrong. I look on my uh, credit card uh, information. I was looking online for whatever reason. I do that regularly. And I see a charge from Consumer Reports again. And I can see online the last four digits of the card number it was charged to. And it was the new card number. Now, I'm livid, uh, and I'm worried, because now I'm, I'm thinking, where did they get the new card number from? Where did I use the new card that it got skimmed, or the card number got stolen? So I went through the transactions, I took a look, and there was a relatively limited number of them. There was a couple of charges on Google and Amazon, which were legitimate, and it's not likely that that's where the card number was obtained. Uh, those guys are fairly, uh, fairly paranoid about uh, card number security because they don't want to be hit by the big black eye. It doesn't mean that they're bulletproof, though, so I suppose it was possible. There was one in-person transaction at a local store. Maybe it was skimmed there. Uh, and there was a charge to Equifax for uh, a credit report, uh, which I could have got for free if I wanted to wait a month to get it. Uh, but I, uh, I decided to pay for it because I wanted to see it immediately after this fraudulent thing because I wanted to see if somebody was taking out loans or something in my name and that would have shown up on the uh, credit report and 
at least as credit inquiries, and there weren't any uh, suspicious ones, so uh, I was relatively uh, relieved by that. Uh, and other than that, there was pretty much nothing uh, until after this second charge. So anything happening after that second charge obviously cannot be the source of the card number. Okay, so I was reasonably certain that this wasn't a case of the new card getting skimmed or otherwise stolen. It hadn't been out of my possession, and it had been used in reputable locations uh, that weren't likely to be compromised. So, I wondered, how did Consumer Reports get the new card number? I didn't have an answer at this point. I, I, I was confused. Now, I did make the assumption that Consumer Reports might want to know about this and do something about it. So I called them as they handily had a phone number beside the uh, merchant name in the credit card statement. So I called them and after waiting on hold for 15 minutes, I had a chat with, with a representative there. And I have to say, the representative was fairly pleasant and I think they did their level best to do something about the situation. Uh, right down to getting somebody else's help on what they could in fact do. I have to give them credit for that. They did their best and, and uh, after a bunch of back and forth, they, I think based on what they said, and a lot of this is inference, there is in fact uh, an account in somebody else's name that had my credit card details attached to it. And also based on a couple of things they said, they had obtained the new card number, but they wouldn't tell me how. They were a little bit cagey on that, and they were, you know, they, they weren't, weren't giving me a lot of information. And I wish I would have recorded that call because then I'd be able to refer to it and probably find out additional information. Anyway, uh, I got the impression that they canceled the account that they think was associated with the card number. Uh, I only gave them the old card number, yet they had the expiry date for the new card number. So, uh, and that makes sense. They, they had to have it to put the charge through on the new card. Um, now, they didn't say that the problem was solved. They did say, though, that I should contact my bank, the card issuer. And I was going to do that, so I did. Now, I uh, I called my card issuer like I did last time. I gave him the the, the same spiel. There's a charge on the card. It's not valid. Uh, and we need to do something about it. And they put me through to the fraud people, which they should do. Now, this is where it went a little bit off the rails. Now, I don't know if it was a misunderstanding on my part or part of what they're trained to do or what have you. But the initial spiel from the uh, representative implied strongly that I was the one being dishonest. They implied strongly that this was a subscription I had signed up for and that I needed to contact the merchant and cancel the subscription. And uh, let me tell you, this was before they even got my side of the story completely. They cut me off, talked over me, wouldn't listen. I actually resorted to shouting to get them to shut up and listen. And that's not something you want to do. And it's not something you should do. Uh, but it got her to shut up and listen. 
So once I had her attention, finally, I apologized for the shouting, and we got on with things. I made it absolutely clear that I did not sign up for a subscription. There is no account in my name that was opened by me. I also explained when she said that I should talk to the merchant that I had, that they could not find an account in my name. They also did not would not tell me what they did find and would not be and were a little bit vague about what they had actually done and we had went back and forth four or five times on that before what i was saying sunk in that i have no recourse with the merchant and then i added that the merchant representative said i should talk to my card issuer and deal with that deal with it that way too and then then she said okay and she explained that uh, yeah the first time we take your word for, you know your your word for it and then after that you need to contact the merchant and I'm like no I have no relationship with the merchant I never open an account with the merchant I never set anything up with the merchant I do not have to deal with the merchant and eventually it's it sunk in that I was not having any of it. They weren't going to put me off. And finally, she admitted that they could uh, mark the transaction as fraud and reverse it. Of course, that would mean canceling the card and getting a reissue again. But you know what? That's what I needed them to do. And quite frankly, uh, if... Uh, Consumer Reports isn't dealing with chargebacks in a timely manner and in a useful manner. They really do need the chargeback black eye on their uh, record with their merchant account. Uh, and I know that merchants get beat up hard if they have too many chargebacks. Their fees go up, all of that. Uh, anyway, uh, we got through that. And uh, so I got the resolution that was needed I didn't want it, but it was necessary. I asked her, how did they get the card number? And uh, this is actually a little more jumbled than it is in the retelling, uh, just to be clear. I asked her, how did they get the card number? And she said that it was probably a forced billing. They forced billed you. And I'm, th I'm going, what does that mean? And apparently, forced billing allows the merchant to obtain the new card information so that they can charge you, continue charging you on a subscription uh, uh, service. Uh, apparently, they need to have the details that go with the old card name. Uh, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, name, uh, you know, zip code type thing, postal code, uh, uh, maybe phone numbers, uh, you know, card number, expiry date, all of that stuff. And that's apparently supposed to be sufficient uh, protection against uh, fraudulent use. Uh, but guess what? For a fraudulent, the first fraudulent charge to go through, they had to have that information already anyway. So yeah, it's not going to protect from future fraud on a fraudulent charge. Duh. They already have the information. Duh. Uh, anyway, I think the representative realized how stupid that statement was immediately after saying it. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, what likely happened, and, and some of what I heard uh, with the conversation with Consumer Reports would tend to back this up is that it was a forced billing where the merchant obtained the new card information. Uh, and the fact that they could do that is a massive problem. They shouldn't be able to. This should not be possible. Furthermore, according to the card issuer, my card issuer, this is a MasterCard thing 
It's above them in the chain. They have no control over it. Therefore, this is a problem with all MasterCards on the entire planet. I rather suspect that Visa uh, has, has a similar uh, uh, feature that their merchants can use. Uh, and it's something that is seriously worrying, especially in this age of fraud. If we take a look at, at, uh, at this, what happened is this card, that the original card, had an expiry date in 2019. And they did a force bill because they got a account, a card not valid or account closed or something in response to the transaction. And the force billing worked, and it shouldn't have. My understanding is the whole force billing thing is intended as a convenience for both the merchant and the cardholder for long-term recurring billing contracts so that it doesn't take uh, manual intervention every time the card expires. Uh, but one would think that you could protect that from abuse of this nature by simply requiring that the, expi the old expiry date actually be uh, passed and be at a reasonable length of time and that the card was closed on the expiry date. That would, would have prevented this particular second billing, uh, this second charge. Alternatively, if the card was closed due to a fraudulent charge, simply block a forced bill. Doesn't matter who issues it. Because if the card was closed due to fraud, it means it was stolen or something like that. And you can't be sure that any charge coming through is legitimate. And that would have prevented this second charge as well. If the card, you know, if the uh, force billing had failed because the card had been closed due to fraud reports. Now, uh, I suspect in most cases the forced billing is in a situation where the card expired or something like that, or it's a legitimate charge that the uh, person had on their account and they don't complain about it on, uh, you know, after they get their replacement card. But the potential for this to go wrong is very high. And it happened in my case, and it's not reasonable. This is a case where MasterCard is complicit in the ongoing fraud because their system explicitly allowed it with no sensible protections. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, it's not even clear that this particular feature is net beneficial. It's such a big risk because the merchant has no way of knowing if the uh, initial charge was fraudulent and it usually takes some time for chargebacks to filter through the system and the merchant gets notified of them. So for a monthly recurring billing it probably hasn't filtered through their financial department yet if they've even got the notice. So uh, you know, and most aren't going to deal with the charge back sensibly anyway. So realistically, uh, I don't see that the feature is particularly helpful, especially when you consider it the big guys like Amazon and Google can quite happily just say, your card's expired, update it. I, like seriously, it's not that difficult. Or even GoDaddy, who does recurring subscription billing, I think they will ask you for new card information rather than, continue, than try to force bill. So the very fact that big guys aren't doing it, or uh, some of them aren't, tells you that the necessary uh, action to get updated payment information is not that onerous. 
And people can easily dig out their card and provide the updated information if they need need to. Uh, so quite frankly, uh, I don't see that there's any legitimate reason that this has to be allowed. And I would very much prefer, especially in this day of fraud, that this particular practice be made illegal. Because there is no real, tangible benefit to it. Only some somewhat, can, uh, you know, minor improvements to convenience for merchants and or customers. But anyway, uh, in this particular case, the problem is not the merchant, the problem is not the card issuer, and the problem is not me. Yet I have to do all the legwork to sort it out. Uh, to prevent yet another billing, another charge, I have to talk to the merchant. And quite frankly, once I've reported the fraud to the to the card issuer, they should be blocking future charges from that merchant and demanding proof that it's authorized. They're not. Uh, and. And you can't tell me that the card issuer can't arbitrarily block any transaction they feel like. They can. Uh, and I think if I have to talk to my card issuer again on this, I'm going to ask them if there's some way they can put a block on all payments to a particular merchant. And if they can do that, uh, and they should be able to, uh, that will certainly... Uh, solve the uh, the problem permanently uh, because quite frankly I don't want to have to go through this every month where I call them up and say look it it's still fraud reverse it because at some point they're gonna tell me that they can't reverse it anymore because it's uh, they're gonna they're gonna uh, demand me to prove that I didn't do something you can't prove that kind of a negative uh, at which point I'm going to have to say, no, prove that I did. And uh, I could see, if this continues, I could end up in a very expensive legal battle. And I will lose, because I don't have the resources to fight long. Uh, and, I, you know, and I tell you, uh, you've never really understood lack of power until you've gone up against a bank. Uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, the whole point of this is that some feature, a feature that some fuckwit at MasterCard thought was a great idea, has been implemented in the worst possible way. Uh, had it been implemented with even rudimentary protections, I wouldn't be making this video. I wouldn't have put up a blog post about it. I wouldn't have emailed reporters about it. I wouldn't have emailed my MP about it. And yes, I did all of those things. Probably won't go anywhere. But I did do all of those things. Now, it takes a lot to get most people to do anything. So that should give you... Uh, some idea how much this actually pissed me off. Now, I don't think there's much more I can say here. Uh, I, I will say, you know, sure, I've been mentioning consumer reports. The reason, there's one more thing I will say. I've mentioned consumer reports specifically because uh, anybody who has a fraudulent charge on their, their credit card from Consumer Reports, you need to call Consumer Reports and get them to cancel whatever account that's associated with because they use forced billing. And as a result, just canceling the card and getting a new one is not going to stop charges from Consumer Reports. Uh, and this is why I've mentioned them. They are partially complicit here because they're using something 
that is dangerous. And they deserve a slight black eye for that. Uh, they really should stop doing that. And just if there's if a card a transaction fails, or the card comes you know it doesn't work, don't try to force it. Go back to the customer and get the updated information from there. Don't try to force bill it because you might be continuing a fraud. Don't do it. And anybody who does have uh, charges that they didn't authorize from Consumer Reports, you're going to need to take further steps than just reporting the fraud to your card issuer because they do do this. Any, and, and you should probably do the same thing for anything that might be a subscription. Uh, so, basically, consumer reports, stop doing force billing. Uh, it's borderline fraud. And it's uh, definitely dangerous. Don't do it. You'll make your lives a lot easier. You won't have to deal with callers like me. And anybody who has a fraudulent charge from Consumer Reports or somebody else like that, uh, my card issuer told me that they can find transactions using the canceled card number. So you don't have to give them your new card number. You can give them the old card number. Anyway, here's hoping that somebody does something about this practice because it's repugnant, it's dangerous, it should not be allowed. And, you know, that's really as much as I can say. I can say that my card issuer, they did reasonably well once I got past the idiocy at the beginning of the conversation. I have to say the Consumer Reports customer representative, customer service representative, did a decent job and did, as far as I can tell, take steps to, to fix the situation. What, what I can also say is that Consumer Reports themselves is, is using a practice that's dangerous and they should stop doing it and that MasterCard is complicit in this whole thing because they allow this dangerous practice. But in reality, Consumer Reports, me, and my card issuer are all victims in the middle between the fraudster and MasterCard. And that's as much as I'm going to say here. So, the usual spiel, if you liked the video or you didn't, yeah, feel free to leave a like or a dislike. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other what you do, but it does tell me that if I get a video with a billion likes, then I know that maybe I should make more videos like that. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, then go ahead and subscribe and uh, turn on notifications. Obviously, you won't get notifications if you don't turn them on. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.